here we are again with the history of saps, blackjacks, and slung shots. Now, as you can see, we have a whole new kind of sap to deal with today, and that is because these are sap gloves, which, as the name implies, are a combination of saps and gloves. At first glance, they of course just look like a pair of gloves, and you can see they don't seem to weigh much at all, right? You just handle them like any others, but they're sturdy leather gloves. Put them together, drop them, and all of a sudden you figure out that there's more to it than meets the eye. They land with a thud because they have lead sewn into them, right? Lead, the perennial sap stuffing and load. But you can see how clever these are. You can't really tell that that's the case. I mean, you really cannot. It's got to be on close examination that you, uh, you realize that. So these lack some basic sap characteristics, noticeably, you know, a handle of any kind, flexibility especially, but they still count as part of the weapons family. Now, you remember this guy here, this kind of weighted glove, this is more of a true sap glove, really, because it's a sap that happens to be a glove, but these are infinitely more common. These were used by police for a long time, police and criminals, and that's what people talk about, or what they mean when they say sap glove. Here's a modern pair showing that sometimes, you know, the intent is a little bit more obvious. You can tell when you glance at these that there's something going on, right? They're just not a regular pair of leather gloves. These seem to have grown in popularity greatly in like the middle of the 20th century. That might be when they started up. Police equipment order forms that have saps and blackjacks from earlier in the century don't include these. So that seems pretty solid, but I have seen people mention, like without evidence, but mention that these were used uh, as early as the 1800s. I cannot corroborate that though. So let's take a look at this one here in particular. And this is a vintage pair that I got. There's no maker's mark of any kind on there. And again, these are, you know, well disguised, which was part of their allure, as you can imagine. And once you've got this guy on, you're almost, it's almost like you're wearing brass knuckles without anybody being able to see the brass knuckles. You can see I can move my hand, I can make a fist, obviously, it wouldn't be much use if I couldn't, and you know, this, these got worn quite a bit. Now you notice there, see, that was just almost no motion at all, and you can see how it shook the, uh, the camera. It's surprising, it really surprising how much extra momentum they give you in your punches. Now the load, the lead shot, or powder, and these here I think are powder, usually cover your knuckles there, and you know, every part of your fingers and fist that make a connection. But they could also reinforce the palm for a slapping motion. So you remember the palm sap here from actually our last dedicated sap video, and you can see the, the similarity these two guys have. It's something you wear on your hand and strike with. Now the palm sap, you know, it takes a little finagling, as you recall from last time, I've got it on, and now I strike really in one way. I could also load up and punch, but basically it's for that. So you could replicate that exact same motion with a palm-reinforced sap glove, but you've already got it on your hand, right? You don't need to take the time, assuming you're wearing the gloves, you don't have to take the time to do that. So here's a traditional blackjack, right? Well, that's what it had been called in the old days, but a traditional sap. And you can see here, the load is, of course, separate from your hand, it's easy to grab and use, but once again, you've got a preparatory movement that's necessary. So you've got kind of traditional sap, palm sap, kind of a wearable on the hand, and then you can see how the sap glove plays into this overall picture. It manages to occupy a unique space, right? You hit in a different way. You're not swinging like with the sap on the right. You're not slapping, assuming it's the knuckle reinforced, more typical glove, like the palm sap. And unlike either of those, or really any other kind of sap, it's as long as you're wearing it, it's instantly ready to use. That would be the big selling point. Now these would vary in design, as I indicated, so you could cover just the punching portion of your hand, right, if you will. Some of them covered the entire back of your hand, all the way to the fingertips. And there's the typical coverage, especially the bulk of it, right? As you can see, there's nothing there on the fingertips on this one. And that's going to give you more flexibility, let you use your fingers, you know, as dexterously as possible while still giving you the punching power. The total back of the hand protection too, I'd, that would be more about protecting your hand. If you're holding like a riot stick, it would have been to help actually prevent damage to your hand, not so much for striking. But it would have added mass as well actually when delivering a shot. And then when it comes to the palm configuration, those were weird. You know, it's, it's more of a ready to use palm version, more, more of a ready to use weapon than that for a palm strike, but then that's going to interrupt with your grip, especially if you're trying to fire a gun. Now, you might recall that sneakiness has always been a hallmark of saps, right? You can slip one out of your pocket very, very easily, even strike instantly when drawing it. The palm sap is hidden by nature, right? Especially if you close your hand a little bit. Same thing here. 
this one, the difference is it's hiding in plain sight. People see the gloves, they just assume they're normal gloves, and uh, they wake up later and find out how wrong they were. And that's how they were used. So uh, police sometimes would develop a nasty reputation on the beat, you know, a reputation to not be messed with. And it actually turned out that the, uh, you know, the heavy-handed cop was wearing sap gloves, and those were the secret to his success. So, see, I'll give you the best view I can of the construction. It's basically just a pouch, really sturdily sewn in there, that just kind of hangs straight down and has the load. So it will shift a little bit. You know, I can kind of move it around. It's going to depend on how you move your hand. But once you close your fist, it's going to be there. So that's it. In terms of construction, it doesn't get much more complex than that, on this pair anyway. Now, one of the surprises here is how well it protects your fist as well. There's videos of people breaking tiles, like scrawny teenagers breaking tiles with these. It turns you into a super puncher and protects your hand very, very well. I'm not even sure if that was necessarily the design, but it takes the impact and spreads it around your hand, and you almost don't feel a thing. And, of course, again, it's a glove, so I can grapple with it, right? It's great. Martial arts-wise, this gives you a lot of options. So these have a great design, but they had two main problems. One was reputation for police. These were seen as really thuggish. The word Gestapo comes up in the literature. And for any user, it's actually less convenient to wear a thick, heavy pair of leather gloves all day long than to have a sap in your pocket and just take it out when you need it. So that's why these never really rivaled saps and blackjacks for overall popularity. So that is the sap glove. We'll see what we have next. Thanks.